Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are gonna color this pickguard and try to make it look more like an old vintage pickguard would. This pickguard comes from my Harley Benton kit guitar that I built like two months, three months ago. My Mike Bloomfield guitar that you might have seen. The kit came with this pickguard but if you've seen the series, you know I made a new pickguard out of wood that I dyed black. I was asked in one of the comments if I had any way of taking the cheap pickguard that comes with it and making it look more like an old vintage guitar's pickguard would look. And I know it's kind of late maybe and that maybe I should have made the video immediately, but I had a lot of other things to do, so, you know, Better late than never, I suppose. So yes, in today's video I'm going to show you how I would do this because this pickguard is something that I might not ever really use. I don't know. So, you know, let's see what happens. If you watched other videos, you might see people do things like put pickguards in coffee or in tea and that will dye them. You might have tried it with these, you know, more inexpensive guitar pickguards and realized that it doesn't really work. I don't really know what plastic is being used in more expensive pickguards and in, you know, cheaper pickguards, let's say. But for some reason, most of the more inexpensive pickguards are not really taking to stay in that way. So if you're gonna dye, you know, a pickguard, you might actually want to look into what kind of pickguard it is. For example, if you have an expensive guitar, like maybe maybe somewhere around a thousand dollars or euros. Those pickguards are most likely made of the kind of plastic that would work with coffee or tea. But if you have something like a Harley Benton kit guitar, you most likely are gonna have to go with something a little bit stronger. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's just start dyeing this pickguard now and I'll show you how I would have done it and hopefully it will help. Okay, so first off, we're just gonna sand this pickguard. Here I have 400 grit sandpaper, which is what we're gonna start off with. And I'm just lightly gonna I'm just gonna remove the top layer and I'm gonna hold it up to the light like this to make sure that all the gloss is removed. And once I've sanded off the gloss, I'm gonna take some wet and dry sandpaper and try to get some of the marks in the pickguard from the 400 grid to go away and I'm gonna use a thousand and move up to 12,000 and just dull the area as much as possible. So here's the pickguard and we're ready to do the stain. Here I have some spirit and here I have some lacquer stain and it's spirit based and so I've put a couple of drops of the lacquer stain in here and I don't know let's say 10 times the amount of a drop into the cup of the spirit so we have a very watered down version well spirit down version but you hopefully understand what I mean because we want to put just a little bit of color on this so let's just put it on here and as you can hopefully see it stains the pickguard just a tiny amount and let's just move this around with a brush to cover the entire area evenly and my camera just died so sorry about that but I'm just gonna you know doodle some of this on and I'm actually not gonna pay too much attention about making it look 100% even I'm just gonna blob it on like this and I'm going very light now you should always go very light because you can always put on more but if you put on too much and it looks fake because it's like exaggerated then you're gonna have to sand everything off and you might actually even have to get a new pick guard because you might sand you know through the top layer of white plastic or something 
Um, I don't see that happening, but I'm just telling you that it's better to... And it might look like, oh, I'm putting so much on and it's a really thick layer because it's like bobbling up on top. But we're going to look at this once it's cleared, I mean dried. And you're going to realize that because all the spirit is going to disappear, it will actually not be a thick layer at all because we have so much... We have so much spirit that is going to disappear, that it's going to be a very thin layer. So what we have to do now is just wait for this to dry, and because it's sort of a lot of spirit on it, it will take a little bit longer, but it shouldn't take that long. It should take maybe, let's say, an hour, and we'll come back to it, because I don't actually really know uh, for 100% how long it's going to take. But as you can hopefully see at least, it's a little bit uneven. We can still move this around a little bit if we want to make feel even it out a little bit more. I like to make it a little bit uneven at least because I feel like that will make it look better. Sometimes when you buy these sort of pickguards that are supposed to be made to look old, they will look they will look really nice, but they will all be super even. Okay, so here is the pickguard now, and as I hope you can see. It's yellowed quite a lot. Now it took about, I know I said like an hour or something, that it took more like two and a half hours, maybe a little bit more actually, but I painted it like three times I think. I actually kind of lost count. And that's the thing you do. You put on a very thin layer and then you see how much it does and if you want more. And if you look at this pick art, I actually think that I went a little bit overboard. I think it's a little bit too yellow. In its color i think it looks nice and all it doesn't look wrong necessarily but i i kind of like to make my guitars more on the subtle side and you know not go too much overboard basically so yeah i feel like i might might have gone a little bit overboard um if a pickguard is more yellow it's more sun has affected the plastic if it's a greenish thing it's like you know, off-gassing and chemical reaction, I think. So you, you have to get a dye that you like. You can also blend dyes. You, you can get a green dye and you could get a yellow dye and you could match them up and make something that is a little bit in between. But try to always go for subtle. Adding a thin, thin layer that is just changing the color ever so slightly. It's the same thing with if you watch my videos that I've done about relicking guitars. Um, where I go through the body and things like that. I try to do as little as possible and just, you know, make it look so that you see that something somewhere has happened, but always try to make it as little as possible. Unless you're obviously working on recreating a specific guitar from, you know, some famous guitarist, then you're more likely to try to make things look like their guitar. And if their guitar is really worn out, then you're gonna make something that looks really worn out. But anyway, I hope you like this. If you want to, you could lacquer over it or something like that, but I don't really bother with that. I just keep it like this. And usually it stays on, you know, so it's, it does a fair good job about sticking to it. Now, obviously you might not be able to get the exact same lacquer stain that I have. So you might have to actually experiment a little bit and buy different kinds and find something. But I think most of them are basically the same thing. So, yeah. Anyway, if you liked this video and it helped you and it was useful for you, I would appreciate if you, you know, liked, commented and subscribed. I really like talking to you guys. You always have nice things to say and it's encouraging to keep me making videos. So, I like talking to you in the comments. And obviously, it helps me out if you subscribe. So, please consider doing that. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I would appreciate it if you did. Until next time, stay awesome and cool. And go and build something that looks like an old vintage guitar. Because, I mean, let's face it, they are the best guitars. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding.